Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a Kentucky veteran finds a way to help other vets cope with the trauma that comes with protecting our country. And two students in our region help folks get groceries without having to leave their homes while also making money at the same time. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It's 632 on this Monday morning. I'm Dakota Makris. Thanks so much for waking up with us and let's take it over to Brandon for a look at our forecast and Brandon. I don't know how you're staying awake over there because there's really nothing to really forecast that much of. So coffee. <laughs> I've, I've been going back and forth to getting drinks here the last little bit. So yes, I've it's, already gone through my Coke Zero. I need to get listen, another one. It is uh, <laughs> it's definitely a much quieter, but I'm not complaining. No. I'm not complaining no. this week, and we'll take the not much needed break because it seems like we've not had one in about eight weeks now or more. It's hard to keep up with all the events that have been going on, but things are quiet this morning. We take a look at the I-75 at Corbin and no major issues. Traffic picking up there a little bit this morning, so that's some uh, something we're watching. We're seeing temperatures that are colder down that way. 23 London and Somerset, 27 in Williamsburg, 21 Middlesbrough, Jacksboro, 19 in Monticello, and 20 in Irvine. Everybody else a little further north of that, a little warmer there. Some of those ridges in those 30s this morning. Across the state and region, we're seeing 45 Tallahassee, 46 in New Orleans, but 24 in Indianapolis and 19 Pittsburgh. So a lot of cold air out there this morning. Just following some uh, meteorologists over in Virginia who saying there's a little bit of freezing rain moving across the border over there. So that's uh, getting some active weather just as close as Virginia, but that's way over along the uh, uh, coastline over that way. So we're taking a look at our forecast here at home for today. 50 degrees, just a few clouds out there this afternoon. Some chilly conditions tonight as we dropped about 24. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. Well, you may have heard it yourself. An Amber Alert went out of, on phones across the area. Bardstown police say 32 year old Richard Gray shot and killed his girlfriend and took off with her four kids. Police say they were called to his home for a welfare check, and that's when they found that woman. Neighbors told police they saw Gray load the four kids in a Jeep and take off. And it was so quiet. So it was quiet even when the guy was here. But when this happened, it was so heartbreaking. Well, that Amber Alert was canceled after police in Mount Vernon, Illinois, caught Gray and found the four kids. Luckily, they were unharmed. Well, in this day and age, there are several organizations out there dedicated to helping military veterans work through their injuries or trauma. And two people in Whitley County are doing just that. Following a traumatic brain injury he suffered in Afghanistan, U.S. Army Sergeant Major Thomas Eichen and his wife Michelle founded their nonprofit Resilient Nights, which is dedicated to providing veterans with peer and art therapy through woodworking and other creative opportunities. The Eichens give veterans and their caregivers a network of support to help them transition into civilian life with ease. We want to help veterans on this side find a new purpose and find a new team, whether it be working with us, helping veterans that are coming up through the system or, or active duty coming through the system, or you know being involved in a motorcycle association, or um, getting involved with the fly tying, you know whatever it is that you do, um, that peer-to-peer -peer support just is so important. Well, they have several plans in the works for the organization. You can find out more about Resilient Nights and its mission on our website. Well, two high school students in Laurel County have started their own food and grocery delivery service. Our Chas Jenkins tells us about the creation of CJ on the Way. Students from South Laurel High School developing a courier service beginning with grocery delivery. It wasn't really taken off like we expected. So, uh, so I approached Jared again and I was we're trying to figure out ways, you know, to to reach out to people, and we came up with restaurant delivery. And just like that, CJ on the Way was born. That's just a, a mix of our names. It's Connor and Jared on the Way, <laughs> and um, we thought it had a nice ring to it, so uh, we, we just went with that. Already looking for ways to improve and expand the business. Our end goal would be to expand across most of the state. Uh, that's way in the long term, but we want to have multiple drivers, uh, a location somewhere, but that's 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 way down the line. Thankful for the community support from local businesses. They promote us, and we promote them in turn, and uh, we deliver to them without the enormous like costs of something like DoorDash, like DoorDash or Uber Eats. They'll take a huge cut of their profits, 
And meanwhile, we charge zero. Giving back to the region that has made them successful. Obviously, we want to support everybody else too. So a lot of our money we reinvest into the community. You know, we'll come out to eat and yeah. reinvest. And we just want to help everybody out because they helped us out to get where we are. Helping the community they love. In Laurel County, Chaz Jenkins, WYMT Mountain News. Holland says they also plan to improve by adding a fleet of vehicles, upgrading their website, and they want to start delivering dry cleaning and medicine prescriptions. Well, small businesses in Pikeville are gearing up to spread the love. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and plenty of events and discounts hosted by small businesses will be accompanying the holiday. Business owners say they are excited to see plenty of couples come out and have fun with their Valentines and enjoy the downtown area. Between beer tastings, chocolate pairings, comedy nights, murder mystery dinners. We have a ton going on in this next week leading up to the Valentine's holiday. Well, Mead says she looks forward to App Cycles Comedy Night this Saturday. Well, love is priceless, but roses aren't, especially on Valentine's Day. Between pandemic related supply chain challenges, worker shortages and bad weather in international growing areas, prices are up. And not just roses for Valentine's Day, flowers of all kind, including those for weddings and other special events, are increasing in price. When you would go over there, everything was full, and now there's some places that are closed, some are open, but you can see there's a shortage. Beyond the supply chain issues, there is still the expected Valentine's Day market for roses, so expect to pay a little more this year than you have in the past. A local business in Laurel County celebrated its one year anniversary during the weekend. Located on Main Street, Local Honey has been serving specials in anticipation for the milestone. Co-owner Phil Smith says starting during the pandemic was risky. However, he says they are confident moving forward. Seeing the challenges that have been here in year one, we're feeling really good about the future. Again, people in the small community of London have supported us tremendously, and we're excited to see where Local Honey goes in the future. It's going to be a great thing for the community and a great thing for us. Well, Smith says they are thankful for the community support, make, mark, making the one-year milestone possible. Well, many people become well-known or even famous for their talents and skills, but one Laurel County native is gaining traction for something, well, she's just not good at. Cheyenne Loomis from London was selected as a competitor for the Food Network show Worst Cooks in America, where her and 11 other competitors fight to become the most improved cook. So far, Cheyenne's run has been interesting. She was even eliminated from the show earlier this month, but another competitor gave up their spot so Cheyenne could remain in the competition. I live in a small town, had never done anything like this before. And suddenly I'm in the kitchen with 12 different recruits from all different backgrounds and we're all relying on each other and learning something new. And yeah, it just, it made me a different person. The show was literally life changing for me. You can catch Cheyenne compete on Worst Cooks in America every Wednesday at 9 p.m. on the Food Network. Well, the city of Whitesburg is accepting umbrella donations for an upcoming county project. Spearheaded by artist Mia Rouse's Art on Main project, the plan is to add umbrella alleys to each major city in Letcher County. Starting today, anyone wanting to donate can drop off their umbrellas at Whitesburg City Hall. I can only imagine that it's going to be uh, beautiful. You see lots of pictures from people that go to Dollywood each year and take pictures under the umbrellas there. And uh, I, I can't wait to see what it is here in uh, Letcher County and especially City of Whitesburg. Well, they are open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30. They are accepting umbrellas of any color, size, or pattern. <laughs> Six forty one here on this Monday morning and we continue to track cold temperatures and that's it. We're looking across the region here. 31 Jackson and Pikeville this morning. 30 in Wise, 23 in Somerset and London. Harlan 2, 28 in Hazard, 27 in Moorhead. Back online this morning after an extended absence and 30 over into Wise in southwest Virginia. Out the door forecast today only going up. We're going to see sunshine for a while this morning. A few clouds will mix in and then we'll still, t uh, still see temperatures. Got to get some more caffeine there. The old brain's trying to get ahead of the mouth this morning. Close to 50 for a daytime high. Dakota.
All right, Brandon, thank you so much. The time is 641. Still to come here on Mountain News this morning. COVID causes school enrollments to see a decline, causing some issues in search for trained workers.